Hi, this is Gail with Bernie of Naperville, and today I have really something exciting to share with you. So first of all, I'd like to just really thank all of you that watch our tutorials. They see me stumble through uh, showing you what not to do sometimes, and also, you know, not so pretty hair days or pretty nail days or whatever. So Bernina of Naperville really appreciates your support. And a lot of you call and you ask, Gail, I want to buy a machine from you. I live in Arizona or I live in Oklahoma or I live in Maine. And we get people from all over the country. So thank you so much for your passion for the Bernina product and your ambitions to learn more about your machine. So today I am telling you that there are three awesome models of Bernina sewing machines that are only available online. And you can buy them from us, Bernina of Naperville, and they will be drop shipped straight to where you live. And this is really exciting because this is a win-win not only for you and for Bernina of Naperville, but also for your local dealer because they also benefit from this purchase. And I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit after I show you these three amazing machines. The first machine that I'm going to show you is the Bernina 485. Now, is this a brand new machine introduced to the line? Not exactly. It's a 4 Series like some of the other 4 Series that you might have seen. But to understand this machine, I just want to let you know a little inside Bernina secret. The numbering system. So with Bernina, if the number ends in five, it's a five and a half millimeter wide stitch width capability machine. If the number ends in a zero, it does nine millimeter wide stitching. So the 485 is a 5.5 millimeter machine. It has a ton of stitches. It has a lot of functionality that you would expect out of a Bernina. First and foremost, it's got a jumbo bobbin. Who doesn't like a bobbin that holds a ton of thread? It also winds bobbins while you're sewing if you had two spools of thread. So it's got that wonderful bobbin winder that all we have to do is wind around, flip a switch, and boom, it winds. Another thing about this machine is you get the knee bar with it. That's the freehand system. And the freehand system is what you can do. You know, as our friend Tiffany Pratt says, it's like high-fiving your Bernina with your knee. And what this does is it raises and lowers the presser foot so you can have your hands on your work at all times for total control. Another thing that gives us a lot of control on this model is that it's got the Bernina foot control with that heel tap feature or heel kickback, or you know whatever vernacular you want to use. It's basically when you press down on the heel of the foot control, it's going to put the needle down or bring the needle up. And you get that special foot control with this machine. Now, let's just talk a little bit about some of these Bernina features. So one of the things that I like most about my Bernina, quite frankly, is the altered stitch memory. And what altered stitch memory is, is when I can take my straight stitch, for instance, and I want to set it at like three millimeters long. I'm doing a little bit heavier fabric, maybe doing some top stitching and that kind of thing. Well, maybe I want to do a little bit of overcasting or maybe I'm doing applique or whatever. As I toggle back and forth on my machine screen, the machine will remember the settings as I sew. So I can go to my straight stitch, it set perfectly, go over to my blanket stitch, it set great, and then everything is just perfect until, of course, I turn the machine off. And if you wanted to ever save any settings permanently, well, that's where our save functions come from and also our personal program. So personal program saves a stitch exactly the way that you want it, and then you retrieve it out of a favorites folder. Whereas saving the stitch or overwriting this, the default setting of the stitch is going to have that stitch do what exactly what you want to do every time you turn the machine on. And of course, don't worry, you can always go back with unsave. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Another thing with the total stitch control that I can do is I can adjust the stitch width, the stitch length, and the needle positions indefinitely 
infinitely, you know, within the range of that stitch width capability of the machine. And on the 485, that would be five millimeters. That I love because I can really alter the way my stitch is created based on the fabric, based on the project, and pretty much based on like my top stitching aesthetic. Another thing that gives me total control is the fact that the tension adjustment is per stitch. So if I am doing like a zigzag stitch set up for a satin stitch applique, or just for decorative thread painting or whatever, I can loosen my upper tension so there's no hint that that bobbin tension is gonna show from above, and it's gonna remember, once again, as I toggle back and forth between my stitches. And if there's a stitch that I really just want a different tension adjustment on, I can also save that as well. I can also save myself from my own self with double needle limitation and the straight stitch functionality. So for instance, I put in a double needle, I wanna do a little bit of work, but inevitably what's gonna happen, I might pick a stitch that zigs when it should have zagged and then I can break my double needle. So on this machine, if I put in a double needle and I tell it what size double needle I'm using, it's not gonna let me stitch wrong and break that foot. Another thing is sometimes for piecing in tiny little seams, I actually like to use a straight stitch needle plate. And if I touch my machine and tell it that I want to use a straight stitch needle plate, then every stitch that I pick is going to not look quite right because it's saying, listen, Gail, you, you have the straight stitch needle plate on here and I don't want you breaking a needle blinding yourself with flying debris and things like that. So that is just one of the things that I sometimes just forget is so easy on our Berninas. Selecting stitches is pretty easy. All I have to do is either turn on the machine and it's gonna start with a straight stitch every time I turn my machine on. I've got my utilitarian stitches right there. I can scroll with my finger just like I would on my smartphone or I can expand my little stitch viewer area and see more stitches on the screen at one time. Just remember, it's that tiny little button over there to the right, to the left <laughs> of the stitch card. So if I want to expand it, I touch that. And then if I want to collapse it, I touch it again. There's lots of decorative stitches, quilting stitches, alphabets, and buttonholes. And yes, the 485 can even adjust that slit width on the buttonhole so it's easier to cut without cutting your buttonhole beading stitching. Another thing that it can do, programmable automatic buttonholes and buttonhole memory. Oh yeah, you wanted to know about the alphabet? Well, it stitches really cute. It's a great way to do a quick little message on a binding if you don't have time to make a quilt label. It's a great way. You know how I used to use the alphabets on my Bernina? I used to do bridal, bridesmaids dresses and things like that many years ago. And one time I had a bridal party where all of the bridesmaids were the same size except for height. <laughs> so I labeled their dresses right there in the hem using my alphabet on the machine. And the alphabet letters are strung together with a feature called combi mode. And the combi mode can be accessed easily by pressing the plus button. And another way to keep your combi mode stitches in check or your alphabet or, or your words is by, like I told you, expanding that stitch viewer area and you can really see all of those characters that you've plotted in to your combi mode. So if you make a mistake, you misspell something and you need to go back, it's super easy. Now, of course, we have a lot of videos on threading, winding a bobbin, best threading practices and all of those things. So I'm not gonna bore you with that in this video, but I do think I'm gonna do a few little stitches just to test this guy out and see what you think. So my first stitching that I'm gonna do is on the Bernina 485. So you can see the incredible precision, penetration power and wonderful features this machine has. Then we'll hop on over <clears throat> to the next one up in our internet machines which does even fancier and more glorious things. <laughs> All right, before we get started 
we might want to have a little look at what comes with this Bernina 485 machine. So I'm going to open our accessory case. And the accessory case does magnetize onto the back of the machine, which is really cool. So you saw my little buttonhole, automatic buttonhole foot wanted to fly right out of the uh, container there. And we have a zipper foot number four for doing zippers. We have a blind stitch foot or a blind hem foot number five and an overcast foot number two. You get four bobbins plus the one that's in it and you get some extra foot racks and you can load your bobbins in these little racks here and this machine does not have coated feet so you're not going to need the coated feet racks but you will need these little racks and the feet go on like this you lay them down in like that I like to put mine in order and then our automatic buttonhole foot goes right there and let's have a look at some of the other stuff that's in here here's the oil now for oiling the machine they are a little bit thirsty and partially it's because of that large jumbo bobbin that you saw me just put into that bobbin case well the machine with a large bobbin like that it takes a lot of friction but it's very easy to oil so sliding the tray off of the machine is going to be harder at first just because you know everything's nice and tight when everything's new but here's the secret to getting it off perfectly every time you're going to take your hand like this over here on the slide on tray and you're going to push with your thumb and I like to support the bottom of the table like this with my hand. Ta-da! You just open your bobbin door. So then you just push on this little lever right there and pull the bobbin case out. And then there's another little clip right here. We just open that up and drop. That's the shuttle race cover. We're going to drop that down and pull out your hook. All right. So we are going to oil on that little fuzzy guy on one side and the fuzzy guy on the other side, right in there. And that's not fuzz, so don't try to poke that out. <laughs> and then the other place that you're going to oil is right down in that silver track, right down in that silver track right there. And that's the secret sauce. That's where the, the, that will make it so quiet and so nice. And then once you're ready to put everything back together, what I like to do is put my hook upside down, just like that, and it kind of goes in at like 11.30 or something like that. And then I just close my door, and then I turn my hand wheel, and now see how everything is spinning nicely? So that is clicked right into place, and then I can put my bobbin case back into position. Now, ideally, when you take your hook out, you always want your needle to be in the highest position. So you're going to use that needle up down button, which is this button right here. And that's going to put your needle down. You have to put your presser foot down to do that. So it puts a needle down or it brings a needle up. So that is the highest position. And then you get a nylon dust brush to clean out under your needle plate. And if you're curious about that, the needle plate it has this little bullseye on it and you just push that, lift the plate off and gently clean with the dust brush. And then I'm gonna put our number one foot on. This is the standard reverse pattern foot and putting feet on with the Berninas is super easy too. You're just going to take this top opening that's like a little circle and there's a little cone right here on the machine and you're just going to slip that over the cone and pull this little lever down with your finger and you want to be careful not to over tighten and then when you take off the foot you're going to take your finger on that little lever lift it up and pull the foot down we have a seam ripper just you know for decoration a little screwdriver and a height compensation tool for sewing over big bulky seams like hemming jeans and things like that 
and you get a foam pad and a medium spool cap, which you see me using on my machine right now, and a large spool cap for larger spools and a tiny spool cap for like Aurafil thread, Isocord thread, tiny little spools like that. And we do have our best threading practices where I show you how to use all of the different spool caps, so that will be handy. We don't use a 485 for that video, but it, it, all Bernina's work the same in that capacity. Now, when you attach your foot control, don't forget that they're coiled up under here like this. So just unroll it and plug it into your machine. <laughs> So the thing that I like to do first when I'm starting to stitch is just test my straight stitch and just see how that looks. So I've got my cute little pink thread in here and I'm gonna lower my presser foot and I'm just gonna stitch. And now this machine has a thread cutter, so I can just cut at the end of my seam. Then I can lift my presser foot and look at my stitch. And I do have stabilizer on the back of this because I plan on doing some decorative stitching in a moment. So another thing that you might notice is when you're turning your machine on for the first time every day, you hear those little grunts, those little growls. And then when you go to take your first stitch, let's just have a look here, shall we? You hear that? Well, don't be alarmed by that. That's just the stepping motors getting ready to greet you for the day. Now, there's another thing that this machine has that you may or may not like. So when you hit your home button and you touch the gears, you can adjust your sewing settings. And I don't like that little needle that points down onto the knot. When that's green, it's gonna do this when you start sewing. See that little X-y bit that it's doing? I don't personally like that. But what's really nice about Bernina is they give you choices. So on this machine, I can go ahead and just turn that feature off. I can also program my foot control to either be needle down or not and a couple different varieties of knot or cut, but I prefer the just the good old tried and true needle up down feature on my foot control. Let's explore a couple more features. So I would like to just try a little honeycomb stitch. That's stitch number eight. It's a tried and true stitch for top stitching knits, for decorative stitches, for all different kinds of things. how cute that is. All right, so there's also some other stitches that you might really enjoy for securing. Now let's take a straight stitch, that's stitch number one. And if we sew two seams together, more than likely you wanna secure it. So the traditional way to do this would be simply to stitch, do a few stitches forward, hold our quick reverse button, which is right conveniently right above the needle like this, and go backwards. So stop when we get to the end, and then continue. Do the same. And cut. Now, that's fine. But sometimes I really don't like having to take my hands off my work. So we're gonna use stitch number five. And when we use stitch number five, it's an auto back tacking stitch. So what we do with it, we're gonna start at the very beginning of our seam. 
we stitch, it goes forwards, backwards, then forwards, all on its own. Then when we get to the very end, even on the screen, it's telling us what button to press. Then when we get to the end, uh, we don't press and hold this quick reverse button, we just touch it. And then it goes backwards, forwards, and comes to a complete stop where we can cut. And now stitch number five is ready for another cycle of securing at the beginning and then at the end when we tell it to. There's another stitch on this machine that's similar and it's stitch number 1301. And stitch number 1301 is a tiny little stitch instead of a reverse stitch. So when we stitch this one, it's going really close together, then takes its normal stitch. Then when I get to the end, just before I get to the end, I press that quick reverse button and then it's going to take its tiny little stitches again and come to a complete stop where I can then cut with my thread cutting function and lift my presser foot with the lever in the back. Those tiny little stitches there and the tiny little stitches there. We talked about that number two overcast foot that comes with this Bernina 485. And I'm going to just put that on here and show you how you can run a little zigzaggy stitch over the raw edge of material for the wash or to make it look good inside your garment. So I've picked stitch number 20. It's a overcast stitch that's meant to kind of hem and seam knits all at one time. And if you ever look at some of these stitches on this machine and you really want to know, well, hey, what is that stitch for? Well, you, all you have to do is touch the little question mark and then touch the stitch and it tells you. But don't forget, you are in charge of your own creativity. So you can use these stitches for other purposes as well. And with this foot, there's a little pin in the bottom of it. You can see it just there, that pin. So you're gonna run your fabric up to that pin. And look at that. So you would use a stitch like this if you wanted to neaten up the fabric to do a blind hem. Now I'm gonna switch back to stitch number one, and I'm adjusting my stitch length with my bottom multi-function knob until the stitch length reads 6.00 millimeters. All right, I've changed my foot to the standard sewing foot, and I'm lining that overcast area right up to the left side of my foot. And what I'm gonna do is stitch this basting stitch. Once this is basted, I'm doing a simple blind hem. So I'm gonna fold this over and expose that little crease here. And I'm gonna do some of the sewing on the seam allowance and then some of the sewing here. So this requires changing to the number five blind hem foot. And the number five blind hem foot has a little guide down the middle, just like this, so that's what we're gonna guide along that crease of our fabric, but it also has a little wire in there, and that little wire in there is what is gonna give the stitch loft so that when I unfold this, it'll just hide my stitches. So let's put this on here. and I'm gonna select stitch number nine, and I'm gonna start at the beginning of this seam, and I'm butting that fold right up to the foot, right up to that little guide on the foot. And I'm gonna lower my presser foot, and now when the needle swings to the left, it's just gonna cut, it's just gonna catch a few threads of that fold. 
and I like to sew fast normally, but this is one of those things where you take it slow and steady. And cut. So now we can take out that basting stitch and you can just see those little dots. Now, of course, if you were doing this in the real world, you would use matching thread. But for somebody who is five foot two, I have needed to use this feature a lot. So the Bernina 485 comes with a variety of feet. You saw me show you there, but sometimes you might want a foot that doesn't come with the machine. So I'm gonna do some decorative stitching. And when you purchase your feet for the 485, you wanna make sure you get the number of what you need. So if it has a C after it, that's for the nine millimeter wide machines. And if there's a D after the number, that's for machines with dual feed. So this one does five and a half millimeters, so we don't need to get that C, and there's no dual feed on this, so we don't need the D. So we're gonna do a regular number 20 foot. And this number 20 foot is open toe, so we can see exactly where we're gonna go with our decorative stitches, and it's notched out on the bottom so we can go over some fun stitches. Because I wanna show you how we can take a satin stitch and make it sing. So I'm picking my number two stitch. I'm adjusting my stitch length to point three, lowering my presser foot, and now we're stitching. And on the Berninas, you can adjust your stitch width while you sew. create all kinds of designs. And that is infinite adjustable stitch width and stitch length. There's also features on this machine that I love which is pattern limitation. So let's pick stitch number 413. First, let's see what stitch 413 looks like. So it's a little heart. So now I'm gonna hit pattern, be pattern end. It's right here on the outside button of my machine next to that needle up down. So I'm gonna to touch this button. It stops automatically at the end and I can either use my foot heel tap feature to put that needle down or my external needle up down button. So I can also shorten this heart and make my little heart stitches go closer together. And then I can also use a feature called pattern end. And pattern end, I can do it up to nine times. Let me show you how I can make little hearts in a box. So I've got that pattern limitation on and I'm gonna stitch. Put my needle down, lift, and pivot. Oh, and you had a question about how I can set the machine to always land with the needle in the down position? Well, right on the front of the screen, in the top left corner right next to tension, is the needle down feature. So let's go ahead and stitch. And now the needle lands down, and I can lift and pivot and pivot again
So I wanted to show you just a sampling of some of the cute little stitches that are on here. And <laughs> there's even a little airplane, just like the one that will send this machine direct to you. Well, I mean, the airplane won't land in your yard, but you get my drift. Now hopping over to our 540, I bet right away you can guess a main difference from the 485 to the 540. That's right, nine millimeter stitch capability. So this machine takes the wider feet, the nine millimeter feet. So there's the number one foot from here in contrast to the one that was on the 485. Now the feet go on just the same. The bobbins are the same, it threads the same. Their expansion table is a little bit different. When we go to take this one off, there's a little button to release it that we can slide it off with, but fundamentally the knee lever is gonna go in the same, same bobbin loading, same knob, same operating system on the touch screen, the whole bit. We also have the same buttons here on the front. I didn't show you the sliding motor speed on the 485, but it has it just like this one. And then of course we have our same buttons here. So there's gonna be a few more stitches, but everything that I showed you on that 485 comes with the 540, except some of the foot packages. The 540 is also gonna be larger to the right of the needle. The 485 is seven and an eighth, while this is eight and five eighths. So eight inches and five eighths of an inch from this point here to the center needle position, and seven and an eighth on the 485. So if you want more space, then the 540 machine could definitely be for you. So let's just have a moment to stitch our straight stitch, just like we did on our other machine. And I'm using my knee lever to do this, and I'm just gonna stitch. There's that little girl. And then cut. And I put red thread in this one. So now let's have a look at one of these stitches that I stitched on our 485 that I want you to see on this machine. So I'm gonna stitch the little heart stitch. And you can see already the difference in the definition. So this is at five and a half millimeter maximum stitch width, and this is at nine millimeter. So look at the difference in those two. So if you love decorative stitches and you're looking to really maximize that stitch width capability, then you know you might wanna consider one of these 540 machines or one of the machines that, you know, ends in zero and you know it does maximum nine millimeter. Now looking at the container or the accessory box that comes with the five series, you're gonna see, <laughs> this one fell out too. Look at these, they take a tumble. So you get, you still get the automatic button whole foot, you get a zipper foot, you get the 2A over locker or overcast foot, and that's the same as the 2, but the 2A is for the wider feed dog capabilities. And then we actually get, instead of that blind hem, with the 540, you get the open toe number 20, but it's a 20C, and that stands for the coating. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that foot out so we can do some more decorative stitching. And you wanted to see how that combination stitch works? No problem. Well, let's just open up combi mode. That's the plus sign. And then on this one, there's a couple different fun things that I like to do. We can certainly take different stitches and string them together to kind of make our own thing. I'm in the little child's folder here. And I can expand my stitches and I could add a hedgehog and an elephant 
and then stitch those out together. So I'm not gonna save my elephant hedgehog there, but I am gonna pick a font. And I'm just gonna pick my first font option and I can write my name. And I have uppercase, lowercase, like this. It's gonna stitch like this. And I like to go ahead and touch select all and one repetition so I can just see one gale there instead of a whole bunch of them because I think you would all agree one gale is enough. And look at that. Isn't that cute? And just to compare, here was my name written on the 485 versus the 540. Now, there's another special thing that the 540 can come with if you choose, and that's the embroidery module. Yes, we can embroider on this machine, and it's totally awesome. If you happen to connect the module to the machine while it's on, you'll simply have to touch your little house button and then touch embroidery and you'll get that screen too. There's a lot of built-in fonts on the machine. There's four and we can certainly do our name. We can do a monogram, a letter, any of those things. And then we also have a lot of embroidery designs to choose from. There's a quilting group. There is some other little monograms and features. Some of these with open space are for applique. There's others, and sometimes you can even scroll down and find more. Freestanding lace and borders, shields and borders, and a quilt label, and some other decorative elements. I'm going to use this compass, and the machine comes with a medium hoop, which I'm going to be using today, and it also comes with a large hoop. So the large hoop is six by eight and the medium one is about four by five. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the medium hoop. And when you first bring it in, that red line indicates that it's too big for the medium hoop, but that's okay because we can make it smaller. And I touch my I button and my enlarge and reduce, and I'm keeping my proportions the same so that I can just use my top knob, move it counterclockwise to reduce it just small enough so it fits in the hoop without a red line around it. And now I'm gonna close that out. My little artist palette tells me that it's one color. And then if I go back to the edit screen, I can rotate the design 90 degrees arbitrarily, or I can even undo when it says a yellow box around it and turn my dial and rotate it in one degree increments. But I like it the way it came in. And then I can mirror if, if I so wanted, but I don't really want to with this one, but I am going to add a layer. And I'm gonna look for my font. So I go up to my folder and my font folder. I'm gonna pick the font grouping in number one and I'm gonna pick an uppercase G and okay. And it brings in my G, we can see that it's active because it's bold and I have an opportunity to move it around in my hoop using my multifunction knobs. And once I get everything the way I like it, it's time to put on the hoop and the machine is actually gonna prompt me to put on the hoop. So I'm just gonna take the connectors and squeeze them together and slide them right onto the bracket that holds the hoop. And once I've done so, I can easily press my green check mark to seat the hoop under the needle properly. And now this has opened my embroidery screen and I just need to thread up my machine or use my existing red thread and use my start stop button to start stitching. And there's also readouts that'll tell you how long the design is gonna take to stitch out it stops with opportunities to cut the thread, and then you just wait. 
And so my compass is gonna stitch in red and then I'm gonna change to a purple when I do my initial. All right, so we've seen the 435 and the 540. And don't you love that the 540 can embroider? What a great option that could be. Now, the next machine that I'm gonna show you gives you all of the benefits of our 485 as a sewing machine, the 540 as a sewing machine, but it has one feature or two features that you might find it very hard to live without. And that is the 10 inches to the right of the needle. And it also has built-in dual feed. This machine is the Bernina 740. So let's check out the size, what it comes with, and using that dual feed foot. So the Bernina dual feed feet look like this. If you compare to their standard feet with that straight shank just like that, the dual feed feet have a split shank. And then they go right on the machine in the same manner as the other feet, but then as you wipe your hand down the back, you can pull down the dual feed mechanism. And to put it back up, you pull it down and push it to the back. Did you see that? Did you see how that foot automatically popped up? Well, when you have a machine with the dual feed, not only is it that handy three layers of fabric feeding system, because you've got your feed dogs on the bottom, you've got this little claw on the top that's your dual feed, and it helps get those multiple layers through your machine, but then you also have a button on the front of the machine that will lower the presser foot and raise it. You can do it by just starting to sew with your foot control, or of course you can use the knee lever to raise, but there's no presser foot lifter on the back of the machine like on that 485 and the 540 that I showed you. Now, another benefit of the dual feed that's not just, you know, making that perfect feed to create these awesome quilting stitches, but it's also that you can quilt with decorative stitches. And on this machine, one of the stitches that I love so very much is this serpentine stitch, which you can find in your quilting stitches. Or it can be stitch number four in your practical stitch menu, set wider and longer. And so that creates wonderful texture as an alternative to straight line quilting. Another thing that's really cool with this feature, and the machines with dual feet have this, is that I can control how much my presser foot clamps down onto the material. And I can do that by programming my presser foot up down button to just bounce up just a little bit like that. Or if I want to engage a hover feature every time my machine lands with the needle in the down position, I can just simply go to my settings, go to my sewing settings, select my little button programming feature and the needle down feature and select the middle choice and my foot is going to hover right up every time I stop stitching. So for instance, I want to stop and pivot. And there I go. So let's try it with a decorative stitch. I'm just going to use my tulips as an example. So I'm going to stitch my tulips and I'm going to use that pattern limitation button three times. And now it's going to stitch three tulips.
And now if I needed to pivot, I can pivot because see how that hover bounced up? I didn't need to use my knee lever or anything. And now I can stitch three more tulips. It bounces up again. And now I can stitch some more. And this is not only very helpful when I'm doing quilting, but this is really helpful if I wanted to kind of go around a tablecloth, a napkin, a pocket, all kinds of stuff. Now, the 740 also comes with a zipper foot that is dual feed. Now, our other machines came with a zipper foot as well, but this one happens to be one designed for the dual feed mechanism. And I'm telling you right now, I've never pinned a zipper in place again since I've had a machine with dual feed. The other feet that the 740 is gonna come with is the reverse pattern foot, number 1C. It comes with the reverse pattern foot 1D, the 4D, as I mentioned, and the 20C. And you saw us use that foot when we were playing with our 540. And you're also gonna get an automatic buttonhole foot with slide, 3A, this came with the 485, the 540, and now your 740. Now you've seen the three internet machines that Bernina is offering. And just so you know, these machines are not sold in stores. They're sold only online. So that means even if you're local to our store and you shop with us all the time, and you kind of like the 540 or the 485 or the 740, when you purchase it from Bernina of Naperville, it's gonna drop ship right to your house. So it's just like me delivering it to you, honestly, except, you know, a better looking UPS driver. <laughs> All right, so now I want to do a little bit of housekeeping and tell you that the machines that I showed you all take the Bernina full shank feet. Also, all of the machines are Bernina stitch regulator compatible. That means that if you purchased a Bernina stitch regulator, you can in put it right on the machine and it's going to work to give you those free motion, perfectly spaced, perfectly adjusted stitches every time, every stitch length, the same length, right? And, uh, and it's just, you cannot go wrong with any one of these machines, no matter what you choose. So let's talk a little bit about the price of these machines. So the 485 is $34.99. Now you might say, gee, Gail, that sounds a little high. And well, you know, here's the deal. This is what you're getting with this machine. All of the things that I showed you, we have it drop shipped right to your house directly. Bernina warehouses it and sends it to you. So you know it's gonna be shipped just correctly. And secondly, you have the confidence to know that when you open this machine and you unpack it and you see this envelope in it that says action required, you're gonna open that envelope and in there is the documentation that you need to take it to your local Bernina dealer where they are gonna provide you your education, your service, and give you 25% off a Bernina item of your choice. So here's the deal. I told you earlier on in this video that this is a win-win. It's a win for Bernina of Naperville because we get to sell you a machine finally. It's a win of you because you get to get that Bernina that you've always dreamed of but haven't maybe been able to journey out to a store to get. And it's a win for your local dealer because they get to meet you for the first time and develop a relationship with you and really help inspire your sewing journey. Now, the next machine in the line is the 540, and it is available, like I said, with and without embroidery. It's only $39.99. And that machine is fantastic. And one thing I would like to tell you is you can purchase it without embroidery. And if you, you know, go to your local dealer and you take some classes and you're like, oh my gosh, I wanna do this embroidery thing. Well, you can add embroidery to it later. So you don't have to make that commitment to buy embroidery straight away. So if you know that you want embroidery and you know, you've kind of been eyeing that for a while, 
well, you can buy it with embroidery for $57.49. Now, maybe embroidery is not your thing, and you like everything about all of these machines that you've seen, the 485 and the 540, but maybe you just want more space, you want that programmable presser foot feature, you want dual feed, well then the 740 machine is probably the way to go. That machine is $59.99. Let's talk a little bit about these vouchers that came with your machine. So there is this action required envelope that's right in the top. You can't miss it when you open up the box. And when you open the envelope, you get a lovely little packet. It looks like it came just direct from Switzerland. And in there is the first important thing, is the voucher for your classes. And you're gonna fill out the portion that you need to fill out. And then you're gonna take that to your local dealer of choice, or you're gonna mail it to Bernina of Naperville if you choose us and then the dealer will have to fill out a little bit of information and then they're gonna send that on to Bernina. And honestly, there is a little bit of money that dealers get from Bernina to make sure that they are supporting you in the best way possible. So that's a real, you know, if you wanna support that local dealer, that's the greatest first step that you can take. And then you um, have a voucher for your service and a voucher for your discounted item. And once you, you know, take that class and all of that, it activates those coupons for the service and the other thing. So no matter if you are in Oklahoma, in the Oklahoma City area, you have to make sure you pick Bernina of Oklahoma City. They have been around for, I think, 60 years. Emily is one of my bestie besties, and uh, she manages the store, and her dad had the store, and her dad got the store from his mom, and so they've been around forever, and they have a wealth of knowledge that they wanna share with you. If you're not in Oklahoma City, and let's say you're in Baltimore, Maryland, well, you're gonna wanna make sure that you visit our friends at Domesticity and ask for Christina because they are very eager to help you out as well. Maybe you're in the New England area and you're near the Boston area or you're in New Hampshire, you're certainly gonna wanna check out Pintuck and Pearl and see Maggie and her team. They do so many wonderful retreats and events and just wonderful things for garments and more. And then, you know, I have a friend, a dealer friend in Austin, Texas, and I have to tell you, no trip to Austin is complete without a ride in his fancy electric car. But Ron and Barbara Goldcorn, they own so much more in Texas. They have wonderful classes, wonderful marketing, fantastic fabric. So for sure, if you are in that area, you're going to want to check them out. Maybe you're lucky enough to be in the South Florida area near Miami. Well, you're surely gonna wanna go down and see Once Upon a Quilt in Fort Lauderdale with Lisa and her team. Maybe you're in the Washington DC area and just south of Washington DC is Alexandria where you will meet Judy at Artistic Artifacts. Or maybe you need to cross the bay and go into Maryland and to La Plata and see Amy at Material Girls. But wherever you happen to be, don't forget that we are all in this together. All the Bernina dealers, we try to work with each other and really support your sewing endeavors. So with that said, I certainly hope that when you decide to buy your Bernina and you love our tutorials and you choose to buy from Bernina of Naperville, you will also support your local dealer. So if you want to see more videos, more tips and tricks, more fun things, check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and there you can like, comment, and subscribe. And if you ever have any questions, we are just a phone call away. 331-472-4231. Cheers.